An element is an item or member of a specific set. And the keynote for elements are that we use the symbol lowercase Greek letter epsilon to indicate is an element of, and then we use the symbol the lowercase Greek letter epsilon with a line through it to indicate is not an element of. We've got set A, which is the numbers 1, 2, and 3, and set B, which is the numbers minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. Then we can say that the number 2 is an element of the set A, since 2 is within this set A. Similarly, we could also say that the number 2 is an element of the set B, since 2 is in this set B here. However, we can't say that 4 is an element of A. This is not true, since 4 is not within A. And so therefore, we would put a line through this to indicate that 4 is not an element of A. Likewise, 4 is not an element of B, so we would say that 4 is not an element of B. If we take minus 1, then minus 1 is an element of B, since minus 1 is within this set. However, minus 1 is not an element of A, since minus 1 is not within this set. Likewise, this would apply if we were to have letters, words, negative numbers, fractions, and so on. The empty set is the set that has no elements or members. And the keynote link to the empty set is that the symbol used to denote the empty set is curly brackets with nothing inside or a zero with a line through it. If we use this second symbol, then we must have our line going through the zero in this direction to indicate empty set. The intersection of A, B, and C, so that's all of the elements that overlap in A, B, and C, was equal to the empty set. And so we could denote that using our curly brackets with nothing inside or our zero with a line through it. Common misconception to note is that the empty set doesn't equal to the set that has zero in it. So the empty set is not equal to the set that has zero in it. This still has an element inside, that element is zero. This is not empty. In other words, it doesn't have zero items. It has one item, which is zero. The final definition is universal set. So the universal set is the set of elements from which all other sets are selected. So the keynote linked to universal sets is the following. The symbol for universal set is this funny looking E shape. This is not the symbol for an element of, and you might also see different types of notation for the universal set. So some people use a capital U, some people use a capital V and so on. But this is the most common symbol that you would come across. If we look at an example, so let's say the universal set is all even numbers, then any set that we make or any set that we have has to be a combination of even numbers. So in this case, if I have the set A, then we could have, for instance, 2, 4, and 6. This set is completely fine since every element of A is an element of the universal set. We could have set B, which if we write as 10, 100, and 1,000, then this is also completely fine, since every element of B is an element of the universal set. However, we can't have something like this. So if we have set C, and we have this to be 1, 3, and 5, then 1, 3, and 5 are not even numbers. And so therefore, set C cannot be something that we use within this context since our universal set is all even numbers so we can't have this we could also have for instance the set 2 6 10 50 76 and so on this would also be completely fine since every element is even and our universal set is all even numbers if we were to change the universal set so instead of having even numbers we had odd numbers then in this case, set A is not valid since we've got even numbers here. Similarly, set B would not be valid since we've got even numbers here. C, however, would be completely fine since every element is odd and our universal set is all odd numbers. Set D wouldn't be fine because we've got even numbers here and we need all odd numbers. Likewise, if we had a combination of the two, so if we had 1, 2, 
3, then in this set we've got two odd numbers but we've got an even number. Since we've got that even number then this set is not valid since we need every element to be an odd number. As a final example we might have a universal set of 1, 5, 10, 20, 75 and 76. Then all other sets that we have need to be a combination of these elements. So if we have set A we could have 1, 5, 20. That's completely fine. If we have set B, we could have 20 on its own. That's completely fine. If we have set C, we could have 1 and 75. That would be completely fine, and so on. So as long as every set that we have has elements that are in the universal set only, then in this context, we would be completely fine.